greetings from here in Berlin. New International, it's the New Beginnings International Church. First time to do a live in English sermon. And um, I'm just trusting and praying that you all will be blessed. That God will speak to you. This is a time when we need to be hearing from God. And let's expect to hear from Him. I want to pray with us today. Um, I'm taking this recording this also on a camera so if I'm looking back and forth that's why. Thank you for joining me now or later. Oh Father I thank you. I thank you for this time together Lord. I thank you that we live in a country or countries where we can be together online. Lord that you've given us this opportunity, this facility, this ability Lord that we don't have in other places sometimes. Father I ask right now for the anointing of your spirit. I ask you speak to us by your spirit. Lord that I would not say anything that you do not want said, Father. I pray your word would become alive, that you would minister to each one here in now and in the future, Lord, that you would strengthen, touch, and encourage, Lord, that you would reveal yourself. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. A couple of days ago, when this crisis was really starting, as I was praying, I felt the Lord speak to me, and he said, nothing has changed. Now that sounds like a very strange thing because actually when we look around, everything has changed. Here in Berlin, we can't meet in groups anymore. We, are, we can go out, but we can't meet in groups. We can't have our church services anymore. Clubs can't meet, sports can't meet. No toilet paper, I hear that's all over the world. So it's not different here. America, there's some places better or worse. So it looks like everything has changed. Many people are not able to go to work or they're working at home. And now homeschooling is um, legal in Germany right now. But the most important thing has not changed. And this is God's message. If you hear nothing else today, God says he has not changed. His throne has not changed. He's still sitting on the throne of eternity. He is still reigning in your life, in my life. And I want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. If you have your Bibles, grab them real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. He says, outwardly we feel like we're perishing, and there may be people watching you are sick. And we pray for God's healing in your life. I have a dear friend in ministry in America, and she said, if I die, in a few days I'll be with the Lord. Nothing better can happen to me. Well, we, we do want to stay on this earth, but in the end, that's the worst that could happen to anybody that knows Jesus, and it's not the worst. It's the best, because we're all wanting to go to heaven, our home. But we may feel like outwardly we're perishing. We don't know what's happening, but he says our inward man is renewed day by day. And I want to encourage you, as I am deciding also for myself, this is a time where we can take time to be renewed spiritually. Our churches across the world, except probably in the persecuted countries, need spiritual renewal. This is a time where we can sit down, watch TV, which I don't do, but we can sit down, watch TV, read books, play comics, and we need to, we need to, with children, we need to have fun. We need to do things fun. But it's a time for spiritual renewal. You may feel like the whole world is coming apart, but inwardly, he says, you can be renewed day by day. No matter how long this thing lasts, day by day, there is renewal. Verse 17, for our light affliction. Well, it doesn't feel very light, does it? But when we look in comparison with many Christians across the earth that are in prison. They really don't have enough to eat. They're worried about their own lives. They don't have the freedom to meet on the internet as we are. Our affliction is light. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
this too will pass. It's not going to stay this way. Coronavirus is not going to rule the world or destroy the world. It will pass, it's but for a moment. It says, it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. As we walk through this time with God, as we trust Him, as we hear Him, obey Him, He will be glorified, and that is going to work a great reward. As we're living for eternity, and there is so much God is going to do for us through eternity. He says, verse 18, and this is the important thing. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We as people, we're so earthbound. We look around as we see the things that are happening. But those are not the things that are eternal. Those are not the things that are unchangeable. He says we have to look at the unseen. In Hebrews it talks about there will come a time where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And only the things that are eternal that cannot be shaken will remain. I believe we're in the beginning of this time. Uh, this is not a, not a doomsday message, so please don't get worried. This is a message of hope from our God to us. But he says, we have to look at the unseen. And if you and I focus our inward spiritual eyes on the unseen, we will realize and we will see him that sits upon the throne. What has not changed? God is still on the throne of eternity. He hasn't been dethroned. The virus has not knocked him off. He's not in intensive care. <laughs> he is still God. He's still powerful, he's still loving, he's still kind, he's still merciful, he has not changed, there is no shadow of turning with him. God has not changed. The creator of the universe that created you and I, that gave you and I life, he has not changed. Everything around us may change, and it is changing so fast we can't keep up with it, but just know, God has not changed. And it says in Malachi, in Malachi excuse me, that's German, I throw in German, Malachi 3, 6, he says, for I am the Lord, I change not. You can be sure he's not going to change. He cannot change. What else has not changed? God is still in control. He's always been on the throne of eternity. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. He is God over every God that is not even a God. His throne has not changed. He's still in control. He's not wringing his hands going, oh, what do I do? This didn't take him by surprise. He knew 10 years ago, coronavirus was coming to the world. And he's not lost control. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ has not changed. Jesus said, I will be with you until the end of the age. Jesus said that we are in his hands, in the Father's hands, and no one can take us out of his hand. If you belong to Jesus Christ, if you've been born again, no one can take you out of his hand, no matter what comes on this earth. You are safe in his hands. Jesus has not changed. The power of his blood to save you and I has not changed. The power of his blood and his death on the cross to set us free from sin and death and Satan has not changed. The basis of reality, the basis and foundation of reality in the unseen world has not changed. We are standing on solid rock when we stand upon God, who he is, upon Jesus Christ, his work on the cross, his resurrection. And we need to see the invisible. By faith, we see by faith the invisible, we see God. We read about Moses, read chapter 11 of Hebrews in these weeks. It talks about Moses who went out of Egypt and he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You're sitting there, you're Skyping or texting with your friends, that may not be quite as strong in faith or don't know Jesus at all, and they're going, how are you doing this? What are you doing? What are you doing? And you say, I'm looking at him that's invisible. <laughs> there is a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm looking at him who's invisible, who sits upon the throne. I can't see him, not with my eyes, but with my spirit. I can see him. I know him. Church, it's a time to be full of the spirit. It's a time to be full of the word of God. As we are full of his spirit, full of his word, focusing our inner eyes on him who is invisible, we will know nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Not that which is 
eternal, spiritual, the most important. The Word of God has not changed. Oh, hallelujah. You know, we can't see God. We can feel Him through His Spirit. We can sense Him through our spiritual senses. We can't see Him with these eyes. But this we can see. This Word of God that is infallible, eternal, endures. Brother Clendenin once said, people are saying that the Word of God, the Bible, is out of date, old-fashioned. He said, no, it's timeless. It's timeless. This Word is timeless. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Christian, build your life upon the Word of God. It has not changed. It will not change. It will not change. It cannot change. It's eternal. And we are secure as we build our life upon his word. Jesus said there's two types of people in Luke 6. Those that build their life on the rock of his word and those that build their life on sand. Read it for yourself. He says those who hear his word and keep his word, who do his word, who obey his word, that they are building their life on a rock. And when the floods come, and when the winds come, and when the storms come, their house, their life will stand. But if we've built our life on the sinking sand, not in the Word of God, or you're hearing the Word of God and not doing the Word of God, your house will, sta your house will not stand. Church, we are in the time of the flood and the wind and the storm. More than any of us have ever experienced in our whole lifetime, except the exception of those who went through one of the World Wars, World War II it would be. But most of us have not had that. But if you've built your life on the foundation of God's word, which is unchangeable, you will stand. We must plant our feet firmly on the word of God because everything else is changing. And I have to say, I believe it's going to keep changing for a period of time. It's gonna, our heads are spinning already. But if we're focused on Christ, if we're focused on his word, we're not gonna be dizzy. We're gonna be standing on his word, his unchangeable word. Maybe you haven't built your house on the word of God. This is a time when people are going to find out, what is my foundation? Is my foundation my friends, my entertainment, my job, my social groups? These things will not hold in this time. And we're seeing that much is collapsing. We can't meet with our friends, at least not here in Europe. This is a time where you're going to find out where is your foundation. And I want to tell you, dear person, if you may notice, your foundation is not in Jesus Christ, not on the unchangeable, perfect Word of God. There's still time. There's still time to begin to build your life on the foundation of God's Word, which will not change. His Word will carry you through. He cannot fail. There's something else that hasn't changed. God has a change in his love for you and I. He loves you just as much as he loved you before this corona thing started. He loves you with an everlasting love. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you to me with loving kindness. I want to look at Romans chapter 8. See, all of the word of God, all the promises of the word of God have not changed, beloved. He's promised to be with us. He's promised to help us. He's promised to provide for us. He said, Jesus said, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's got enough worries of itself. Trust him. Seek his kingdom. Seek his will. Do his will. That's a promise. He has promised that he will keep us I know whom I have believed it, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. In Job it says that. I know that my Redeemer liveth. There are so many promises. He said, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you, our good shepherd. Promises of God have not changed. This is the time to begin to hold on to the promises of God have never before. Romans 8, verse 35. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? We're in distress. We're in distress of nations. Some are in distress physically. 
It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? None of these things can separate us. Verse 37, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In Christ, we cannot be separated from the love of God. You may be separated from your social context. You may be home by yourself. But you're not separated from the love of God in Jesus Christ. He's right there with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to get sick and have to go to ICI. You may be in a place where, where you really can't go out because you're at risk. He's there with you. He loves you. He's promised to be with you. Verse 38, Hallelujah, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Things present, this present virus, this present uh, epidemic, this present situation, so how is it? Uh, sorry, German. This present situation at home or financially, or economically in the world, or physically. He says, this present situation cannot separate you from the love of God. Lo the love of God is with you. God loves you. He's with you. He's not going to forsake you. As his child, as his son or daughter, you're safe with him. He said, or things future, not things present, and not things to come. We don't know what's coming, but we have the word of God, which is not changed, that says, even things to come cannot separate you and I from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're safe. He's a good father. He hasn't turned into a bad father. He's a good father. He's a good God. You know, God can't change. He's perfect. He can't get more loving. He can't get more intelligent. He can't get more about perf uh, English word. Uh, uh, merciful. He can't change. Because he's perfect in his love, in his purity, in his holiness. He cannot change. So you're safe. I'm safe with him. So there's something else that has not changed. And hear me carefully. God's eternal plan has not changed. You see, God has a plan for this world. He has a plan that began before the foundation of the world, when ma even before man fell. It says, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. God made a plan before this world began for salvation for you and I, forgiveness of sin, deliverance from sin and Satan and death, to live eternally with Him in heaven. He has a plan. And if you don't believe that, I encourage you, read the book of Daniel. Just sit down and read the book of Daniel. It's not many chapters. It is amazing. There you see the sovereignty of God. He gave Daniel visions and dreams, and he showed him the world, uh, English, world, world kingdoms. He showed Daniel the kingdoms of the world before they ever came, except the one he was at. The Medes, the Persians, the Babylonians, the Romans. He showed them the kingdoms of the world, the Antichrist. You see, God has control. God has has a plan. It's not just happen chance. It's not just chance. And oh my, we're going to have to work God. God's a little bit worried because they don't know what to do now. No. Read Daniel. It'll strengthen your faith. It'll strengthen your understanding that God has an eternal plan. And his plan is one day to stop evil, to stop Satan, to stop all of the injustice in this world. He says it will come. Now you've heard all your life Jesus is coming back. Those of you who know Jesus. But in Peter, it says, some people are saying, well, he's not coming back. It says the, it's the long-suffering of God that he's not come back. This is why God has not stopped all the evil in this world yet. Because if he could, if he would do that, he'd stop the world. It'd be the end of the world. But it says he's waiting for people to repent. He's waiting for people to be saved. God's eternal plan is salvation for man. A new life in Jesus Christ. That we become his children, born again by the blood of Jesus, the power of the cross, by his spirit. That's his eternal plan. It's not just about me, little me, here in Berlin. It's not just about you, little you, wherever you are. We're all a part of it, but he's got a bigger picture. And that bigger picture has not changed. And we need to know in the end, 
God will say, it's enough. I'm stopping. Just like he did in the days of Noah. Suddenly, the end came, but he rescued those who believed in him, who belonged to him. You're safe in the ark of Jesus Christ. But it will come, there'll come a day where Jesus Christ will take his church away in the rapture. There'll come a day where everyone will stand before the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne. And if your name's not written in the book of life, you will go into the lake of fire forever. But those who are written in the book of life, he'll say, welcome. Welcome to my kingdom. Welcome to my children. He's going to start over again. A new heaven, a new earth, eternity with him. Wonderful heaven where there's no sickness, no coronavirus, no loneliness, no fear, no death, no Satan, no nothing. Because Satan will get what he deserves, the lake of fire. That's just a short review. But you see, we have to know God's plan has not changed. He has an eternal plan, and His will, in the long run, will be done. Jesus talks a lot about this. In Matthew 24, He says, I've told you these things are coming to pass. You see, we're not supposed to be caught off guard. He said, look at the fig tree. When the fig tree begins, begins to bloom and shoot out, you know the times is getting close. We need to know that God has already said this is going to happen. Don't be surprised. Maybe we didn't expect it to be this way. Maybe we didn't expect it to be like it's going to come. But he has told us in advance that these things are going to happen. He said there's going to be many false prophets. There's going to be earthquakes and plagues. But he says it's not the end. It's just the beginning of sorrows. We're in the beginning of sorrows. I think we have been for a while, but we're maybe just now realizing it. But God has not changed. His love has not changed. His word has not changed. This is our nourishment. Feed yourself spiritually, beloved. Don't just eat at home on food. Feed your spirit with the word of God. Take time for prayer. In this time, God is giving us a space of time where we have in some cases more of a chance to spend time with him. I don't want to miss this opportunity to focus in, to check out my priorities, to press in to a deeper relationship with him. This, it will not always be like this. There will be a day where we can go out and we can do everything we want to do. But right now, it's this time. Luke 21. And I want to say... There's not a person listening to this video that God doesn't love. You may not know Jesus. You may not care about God at all. God loves you. He loves you so much more than you can ever imagine. And he wants you to know him. Luke 21. Here Jesus is talking again about the last time, the end of time before. And at verse, verse um, we don't want to read it all. Let's start with verse... 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Jesus told us ahead of time, as I said, these things have to happen. The wars, the things that are happening, we don't like it. But it's a, it's, we're, in a, we're in a world that is fallen. It's corrupted because of sin, because of Satan, because of evil. The Bible says the whole creation is groaning and waiting for the adoption of the sons of God, which when Jesus takes his church, his believers, out of this world, and we're with him. Verse 10, Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. We've had that. And famines. We've got that in different parts of the world. He said, Great earthquakes and pestilences. We're in the midst of a worldwide pestilence. They have had them before, the bubonic plague, other things, but not in our lifetime. He says these things, pestilences and fearful sights and great signs there shall be from heaven. So Jesus has already said these things are going to happen. They're going to happen. Be ready. You know, um, I'd rather not have them happen. I'd rather not 
be here. I'd rather be outside walking in the beautiful sunlight. I'd rather be outside meeting friends. But right now that's not possible. And I kind of think of it like this. Maybe it helps you, maybe not. When my dad died, my um, stepmother Goldie, she had dementia and it was not where she could live by herself. So I was responsible. I worked and got her where she could be cared for. And it was a couple of years going back and forth and caring, watching for her. And I knew that it's not going to get better. She was already quite old in years. And there came a point where I realized, oh man, she's going downhill really bad. And in my mind, I thought it was like a roller coaster. You know, when you're in a roller coaster, you start going up very high. And then there's a point where you reach the top, and then you go down. I don't know where we are on this going up. I don't know when we're going to reach the top, but there will be a point. And then it's that free fall. You can't get off. <laughs> and I told myself when that started with Goldie, I thought, I'm in the roller coaster, and I'm just going to hold on. I'm going to hold on because this thing will stop. And it did. It was a rough ride. It was a scary, scary ride. It's a scary thing where we are. It's scary. Because we don't know what's going to happen to us or our family, what's going to happen to the economy. It is scary. But we're not alone. And you are safe in the hands of the Lord, no matter what happens. And uh, you're not going to fall out of the roller coaster. Stay in. Don't say, oh man, I'm just going to turn away from God. This is not the time. This is the time to press in to him more than ever before because his heart is open. His arms are open. His ears are open. His eyes are upon you as his child. And he loves you. So we read, Jesus said, there'll be earthquakes, famines, pestilences, fearful sights. And then he talks about, we won't read it all now, there's going to be persecution. Well, that's already come. There's so many Christians being persecuted. And then he talks about the destruction of Jerusalem, which will come before that happened in 70 A.D., where Jerusalem was leveled to the ground. Now, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations. Oh, my. Distress of nations. We're in it. I've never seen this in my life. I'm not as young as you think. Distress of nations and perplexity. And the sea and the waves roaring, tsunamis, we've been having those for the last 10 years. And here we are, verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. But you and I don't have to be overcome by fear. Jesus said, don't fear, be of good cheer. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Whenever Jesus came to his disciples in a time of need, or even in, when angels came to help people, one of the first things Jesus said, and many times angels, is fear not. Fear not. Don't fear. You're going to make it through. Because he has not changed. His word has not changed. His love has not changed. His presence has not changed. His purpose has not changed. And that good work he's begun in you, he will complete. He says in verse 27, men's hearts failing them for fear of what's coming on the world. You know, this is our time. Believer, it's our time to share the hope of Christ with people. To share that there is hope to show God's love, to show God's mercy, to help those that God gives us an opportunity to. Because it is a terrible time if you don't know Christ. What do you have to stand on? Sinking sand. Verse 27, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Hallelujah! He will come, he will catch his church away in the rapture. It will go on here on the earth. We won't get into all the eschatological stuff. Verse 30, when they now shoot forth, you shall see and know your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. He's, oh, verse 29, behold the fig tree. You see, summer is nigh at hand. 
31. So likewise, you, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. There's a passage where he says, 28, lift up your hands. When you see these things come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, beloved, it's a time to be looking up and saying, Lord Jesus, come. I'm ready. I love you. I belong to you. You are my goal. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Verse 33, God's word does not change. It's interesting that the context that God's word does not change is here in the middle of what Jesus is saying about the last days. Verse 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You can build your life on his word, what he says. You can trust his word. It hasn't changed. So what are we supposed to do in all of this? Well, verse 34, he says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so the day, the day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He says, watch yourselves, pay attention. See how your life is with God. And don't escape now in this time of fear with alcohol, drugs, sitting and turning off your brain in front of the boob tube. Use this time. Surfeiting means nausea from drunkenness. And that probably doesn't have to do with most of us watching, but what does, he says... Take heed to yourselves, lest at any times your hearts be overcharged. That means overburdened with the cares of this life. Oh, my. That's a fight every day right now for every one of us, not to be overburdened with the cares of this life. But he says, don't do that. What do we do? Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that should come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We are to be awake. We are to see the times we're in. We are to understand the times we are in through the Word of God and pray. Talk to God. Worship Him. Not as a method, but because of who He is. One last thing that we can see to do is in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I want to encourage you also, just in this time, many people are closed in at home with children, with roommates. People are stressed. It's a stressful time to be in close quarters with people. No matter how spiritual we are, it's a time where God can work on our character. It's a time where we need to be merciful with each other, forgiving, understanding. Give people room to make mistakes. Give people room to have a meltdown every once in a while. Spend the time building relationships with people you know need to be encouraged. Hear what God is saying. There is a story I just recently, someone sent me about another plague that, was, um, that happened. It was pretty much worldwide. It's a true story. I'm sorry, I don't have it right here where it was. And um, there was a couple of couple of, company of people on camels, and they came to a city that did not have the plague. And they said, we've come from a place that doesn't have the plague, and we don't have the plague. We're healthy. Please let us come in and stay there. There were some righteous people, men of God in that city, women of God, and they began to pray, and they asked God, God, should we let them in? It's a true story. And God spoke to their hearts and said, the plague is in the baggage of the camels. So they didn't let them in. They went on to another town. The plague hit that town. They didn't know it was in their camels stuff. They didn't know it. The plague hit that town and killed almost everyone in the town. Beloved, this is a time to hear 
what God is saying to us personally, for our family, for our church, for our world, for our neighborhood, for our block that we live in. He will talk. He hasn't changed. God is a God who talks. He spoke, spoke all through the Bible to men and women who loved him, who trusted him. And he hasn't changed in that. So, last verse, chapter 4 of Philippians, verse 4 through 8. I'm sure that most of you have already heard a sermon about this and read yourself. But what are we supposed to do besides pray and seek God? He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. What? I'm supposed to be rejoicing that I'm locked in here and I can't go out? What? I'm supposed to be rejoicing that I can't meet with my friends? What? I'm supposed to rejoice in this and this and this? He doesn't say we rejoice because of those things. They're not good things. But he says, rejoice in the Lord always. We've got a God who loves us. We've got a God who's faithful. So faithful, he gave Jesus Christ on the cross to die for us when we didn't even care beans about him. So faithful that he's forgiven us of our sins when we've come to Christ in repentance and faith. He's given us a new life. He's set us free from the power of Satan's sin and the darkness. And it says rejoice in the Lord. You know, uh, a couple of days ago, I was having a kind of a hard time focusing on reading my Bible, even though I'm by myself. There's so much to do and there's so many people writing. And finally I said, I am going to read my Bible a little bit more than what I did that day. So I just took my Bible. I started reading it out loud opened a psalm, started reading it out loud. I want to encourage you, read your Bible out loud. It's amazing. And it was worship. I began to just thank him for his mercy, praise him for his goodness. And I felt such a joy. I thought, this is crazy in the midst of this situation. I'm so happy. He says, rejoice in the Lord in who he is and his goodness and his love. Take time, beloved, in this time of need and uncertainty. Rejoice in Him. Oh, we have every reason to. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but let's do what we know to do. He says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So, we rejoice in Him. Don't worry about anything. You're either going to spend your time in fear and afraid, or you're going to spend your time focusing on the unseen, getting strength from Him, hearing Him, doing what He's showing you to do, ministering to other people. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God, you can pray. Tell him. He wants us to tell him what's in our heart. He wants us to share our hearts, our fear, our worries with him in faith. He wants us to share. In German, I like the word. It says flehen. It's like, oh, God, help me. Flehen. You can do that. Pour out your heart before God, it says in Psalms. Because he's a refuge. He's a hope. He's a help. So we are to pray with prayers and supplications. Church, we need to be praying for our government. For God's protection, for his wisdom, whatever country you're in. We need to be praying for the health workers who are daily putting their lives on the line. I have relatives that are doing that daily, that are doctors. We need to be praying for the policemen. Even for the ladies in the stores that have to get the groceries and sell them, and people are breathing on them all the time. They have no choice for the people who are still out there. We need to be praying and praying for them, and be praying that people turn to God. Be praying that people begin to focus on spiritual things and not just on our happy, have fun, entertainment society that we've had that's gone. We have a chance to focus on that which is really eternal and that which is really going to carry us through this time. It's not religion. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. God has given us a relationship. He wants a relationship with you and I. It's not 
go to church. We can't go to church. It's a relationship. And it says, when we pray about everything and seek everything, that the peace of God will keep us in Christ Jesus. His peace that is above everything we can see, feel, and that we know. And then verse 8, finally, and I'm coming to finally. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and there be any praise, think on these things. Yes, we need to know what's going on. Yes, we need to be informed. But he says, don't spend all time, all day thinking worst case scenario. What if, what if, what if, what if? We don't, things always happen differently than we think anyway. He says, think on the things that are pure. If you watch TV, which I don't because there's not anything worth watching, but if you do, pay attention to what you watch. Watch things that are pure. Don't watch the lust of the flesh listed in Galatians. Fill your mind with things that are pure, that are lovely, that are true, that are worthy of praise. And then he says, your, his peace will keep you. Maybe you don't know Jesus. He knows you. He loves you. And he says, whoever comes to me, I will not cast out. There's nobody too bad. There's nobody too atheist that Jesus cannot forgive. What do we do? We put aside our pride, our stinking pride, and we say, Jesus, I've sinned. I've broken your law. I'm selfish. I've lied, I've been impure, and whatever it is, everybody has things they know are wrong, but we come to him and say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. We repent, we turn around, not just, oh, I'm sorry I got caught, we turn around and we say, I'm sorry, God, I want to change. And then he says, repent and believe, put your trust in Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross for you. You can pray right now, you can say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner, not just what I've done, but who I am, and I want to change, and I cannot change myself, and I want you to change me. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me, and I take that, what you did on the cross for me. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to walk with you. You pray with all your heart sincerely. You're going to find out God loves you more than you ever imagined. You'll begin a relationship with him that is forever. And maybe you have questions. Write us here on our Facebook at New Beginnings Berlin at Alexander Plotz. We'd be glad to talk to you, um, pray with you. And if you know Jesus, you're in his hands. You're safe. And nothing has changed. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each one who's hearing and each one who is going to hear. Lord God, this is where the rubber meets the road. Either our faith in you is going to hold or it's going to collapse, Lord, and true faith in you, who you are in your word, will stand and will grow in this time. Lord, I pray you reveal yourself to each person here, whether they know you or not. Lord God, those of us who know you, we want to know you more. We want to be in deeper, closer communion with you. Lord, we want to hear what you're saying to your church, what the Spirit is saying. Open our ears, open our eyes. Lord, use us for your glory. Let us be a light in this darkness. Let us be a comfort to those who need comfort, a help to those who need help. And Lord, help us to use this time to be disciplined, to not waste this window of opportunity that you have given us as a church worldwide. Lord, I pray for comfort today for those who need comfort. For those who are just saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Lord, comfort them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for those who need healing. Touch their body in the name of Jesus. You are the healer. Heal them. Raise them up. Father, I pray for protection for us and our families from this plague. 
for you are our refuge and our protection. Father, I pray for those today who are lonely. They can't get out. They can't be with their friends. Lord, I pray that they would find out that you are the friend who sticks closer than a brother. Oh, Lord, you are enough. You are more than enough. Lord, I thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus, that you have not changed. We thank you, Father, that you have not changed. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Uh, I see one of these videos didn't have sound, so we'll work on, at least we'll have one that has sound for sure. I will continue to preach in English because there's so many people here in Berlin that, that need to hear God's word in this time of need. So pray for us, write us, thank you for your prayers and for being here, and God bless you. It's going to get better. It won't stay this way. Nothing will stay this way. And God and his word have not changed. God bless you.